Hello zoology people! Today I want to talk to you about the class Reptilia, the reptiles. So the reptiles have a huge advantage over the amphibians. Reptiles developed what we call an amniotic land egg. And so reptiles were freed from water where amphibians needed to find water to reproduce. The reptiles don't have that problem. With the development of the amniotic land egg, the egg is self-contained with its own moisture and water inside. And so this is the feature that allowed reptiles to eventually take over the planet, become the dinosaurs, and rule the earth until a meteor hit. But besides that, the amniotic land egg was the huge evolutionary step that allowed the conquering of planet Earth on land. And so this is the reptiles. All reptiles are born with lungs. They all have amniotic land eggs. This is why sea turtles have to come to land to lay their eggs. This is why sea snakes in the crates have to come to land to lay their eggs. If they were to lay their eggs underwater, their eggs would actually drown. So all reptiles started off as land animals. It's just that the sea turtles moved to the ocean and then they evolved to spend their entire lives in the ocean, but they still have to come to land to lay their eggs. All right, so let's talk about some of the orders. So we're talking about the class Reptilia. Let's talk about some of the orders of reptiles. The first and oldest one is the Testudines. The Testudines are the turtles, and a tortoise is a type of turtle. So the turtles and tortoises, these are our oldest reptiles. We have incredibly old fossils of turtles and tortoises. Let's talk about the difference between a turtle and a tortoise. So turtles can swim, tortoises cannot. It's that simple. So if it swims, it's a turtle. If it can't swim, it's a tortoise. And if you were ever to take a tortoise and drop it in water, it's gonna sink. Maybe it'll float a little because there's some air in its shell, but they cannot swim. They will drown. And so tortoises you usually find in deserts. Tortoises are an amazingly efficient desert animal, uh, but turtles, usually need to stay near water somewhere and are mostly aquatic. Turtles and tortoises do not have teeth. Instead, they have a beak. Uh, some of them are born with an egg tooth that helps them cut their way through the egg, but then that falls off. So turtles, tortoises, no teeth, but they have a very sharp, strong beak. Most turtles are carnivores eating fish or insects, and most tortoises are herbivores or sometimes eating fruit although tortoises will scavenge, so they'll eat dead animals or things that they find, but most tortoises are vegetarians and most turtles are carnivores, catching fish or eating insects or whatever they can grab hold of. The next order is Crocodilia. There's about 21 species of Crocodilia, so the crocodiles. An alligator is a type of crocodile since it's in the order Crocodilia. And so these guys are, as you know, quite large, but we do have some small ones. Uh, alligators are from the United States and there's a species from China, but otherwise crocodiles are all over the world. We have some in South America, we have some in Africa, and we have some in India. The crocodiles are a very successful animal. These guys were here before the dinosaurs, they survived the meteor, and they are still here. The next order of reptile I wanna talk about are the squamates, squamata. These are the lizards and the snakes. Yeah, lizards and snakes are put in the same order, although they're broken into their own suborders. So the first one we'll talk about is the lizards. These are in the suborder Surya. So Surya are the lizards. There's about 4,500 different species of lizards. The textbooks usually say that there are two venomous species of lizards, but in reality there are three. There's the Gila monster and the beaded lizard. Those are both venomous lizards, but it has been shown that Komodo dragons do have a mild venom, so technically they should be considered one of the venomous lizards. So technically there's three venomous lizards. So I wanna talk about a few groups of lizards and what puts them in that group. The first group of lizard I wanna talk about are the monitors. So monitor lizards use their tongue to smell their environment. They have a Jacobson gland on the roof of their mouth, just like snakes do. They have a forked tongue, so they flick their tongue and this helps them sense their environment. Monitors are usually quite large. They're an old lizard, been around for a very long time and many of them are fierce hunters. 
This is Salvador, the red tegu. He is from Argentina, which counts as the New World. So technically, he does not count as a monitor lizard because all the monitors are from the Old World, Africa or India and Asia. And he does have a forked tongue and a Jacobson gland, and he uses his tongue to smell his environment. And he has most of the features that you'd expect from a monitor, but those have developed because of convergent evolution. He is not technically a monitor. Hi, Salvador. He's an omnivore. He eats anything he finds in the jungles of Argentina. He'll eat eggs, chicken, rodents like mice, and fruit. The next group I want to talk about are the geckos. The geckos are a soft-bodied lizard. There are two types of geckos. There's the ones with eyelids and the ones without eyelids. A lot of times people will call the ones without eyelids true geckos. So remember, geckos are a soft-bodied lizard. They don't have eyelids. Their tail, if you were to pull on it, would be removed. And they have the sticky pads for climbing on their hands. So the way geckos stick is not actually because of like suction or anything like that. The way that they stick is something called van der Waals forces. What it is is on each of their toes is little tiny hairs and each of those hairs has little tiny hairs and each of those hairs has little tiny hairs and each of those hairs have little tiny hairs all the way down until the hairs are so tiny that they're actually connecting with the atoms and molecules of the surface that they're climbing. So it's more of like a static between atoms and molecules. Next, I want to talk about the iguanas. They're a large lizard that is a herbivore. They eat mainly fruits and vegetables, which is rare because most lizards are carnivores. And iguanas are found in Central and South America. Last, I want to talk about the skinks. The skinks are usually a narrow, skinny lizard. You can always identify a skink because they don't have a defined neck. Their head just kind of goes into their body. Most skinks have a pointy, sharp face that helps them dig into sand. They have really short, little limbs that help them move around really quickly in rocks and in dirt. Next, I want to talk about the suborder Serpentes. These are the snakes. There's close to about 3,000 different species of snakes. They have no legs, no limbs, they have no eyelids, and they smell with their tongue using a Jacobson gland. And so let's talk about some groups of snakes. First, I wanna start with the pythons and the boas. Our pythons and boas are our oldest extant snakes. These guys are very prehistoric. We have a ball python here and a boa constrictor here. One of the main differences between pythons and boas is that boas give live birth and pythons lay eggs. All pythons have heat vents along their jaw that help them sense heat so they can sense their prey by its heat. There is a boa that has heat vents. The tree boas do have these heat vents, but it's primarily a python feature. The pythons and boas are both constrictors, meaning that they strike, bite their prey, and then they wrap around squeezing and crushing their prey. They usually, usually asphyxiate their prey, so they crush it so it can't breathe until it dies, and then they will have to swallow their prey whole. So all snakes have to swallow their prey whole. They do not chew. They, their jaw is in three pieces, so they'll dislocate their jaw in order to help them swallow whole. The reason that they eat this way is, well, they don't have hands to really help them with this process. It's also an efficient way to eat very large prey. Now, there's always a debate between which is larger, pythons or boas, and there's two species that are always competing for this title. The anaconda is a type of boa, and the anaconda is one of our largest snakes. And then the reticulated python, which is a python, is our other largest snake. And so there's been all kinds of reports about anacondas and reticulated pythons reaching over 30 feet. So which one is the largest? It just depends. There could be a reticulated python larger than an anaconda, and there could be an anaconda larger than a reticulated python. Both of those are our longest snakes. Our heaviest snake is the Burmese python. The Burmese python can reach over 200 pounds. It's not our longest snake, but it is a very heavy snake.
There are lots of venomous snakes like rattlesnakes and cobras and coral snakes and mambas and all kinds of venomous snakes, but the boas and pythons do not have any venom. They're not a venomous snake. Next, I wanna talk about the order Sphenodontida. These are the two ataras. They look a lot like a lizard, but they're in their own order. What really sets them apart is their teeth. They have two rows of teeth on the top and one on the bottom. So their bottom row of teeth goes between the top two and they can kind of saw their prey when they eat it or saw their food. And so these are the two ataras. They're a very prehistoric reptile that looks a lot like a lizard. The two ataras, they're the last ones in their group. Okay, well, this was an introduction to reptiles. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.